Hello people of the internet, it's Amanda in 4 days a video. I feel like I haven't really done this in a while, even if I think it's only been a couple of weeks ago. But I'm super excited to be talking about a film that I just recently watched. I'm talking about Hanataba Mitai Koyoshita or Fell in Love Like a Bouquet, We Made a Beautiful Bouquet. This movie stars Suda Masaki and Ari Murakasumi and I've heard so many good things about this film. When I saw the trailer, I was pretty excited about it because even if you sort of like know where these types of stories are going to head um, there's just a little bit of like excitement that goes into like how it's going to unfold and everything like that I'm not sure if I'm that like, if anyone else can relate to that but for me um, I really like being spoiled more when it comes to the plot because it makes me even more excited to see you know how they're gonna reach that certain ending or something like that I don't know um, but for this one it's definitely that because we've already seen this type of like love story before where it's not exactly a happy ending but it's not exactly a sad ending either um, I thought it was going to be very similar to Gekijo, which is starring Yamazaki Kento and Matsuoka Mayu. That film I really, really loved. Like that one wouldn't be everybody's cup of tea. So there, but yeah, for this film. So we're gonna be talking more about it today. With that said, let's just get to it. <laughs> Well, before we start talking about, you know, the things that I like, didn't like, or anything like that about this film, let's talk about the plot first. The story starts with the year 2020, where we see two different people. So the characters of Suda Masaki, who is Mugi, and the character of Arimura Kasumi, who is Kinu, who are sitting in different tables of the same restaurant, and both of them were looking at um, a very sim uh, the same young couple who wanted to listen to the same song so they shared their earphones together. Now, both persons separately are trying to explain to their dates how that doesn't work because obviously you have to listen to like music with both your earphones on or else it's like listening to two different songs because songs are recorded and edited in a way that the experience in the, like that you will hear from the left earphone and the right earphone are supposed to be like very different sounds to make up you know the holistic sound of a song um it's a very like they explain it better than me i feel like but that opening sequence was very smart because it shows like the juxtaposition between their two characters who initially we think of as strangers um who are trying to explain a very similar thing or very similar sensation to the people that they're with um they both got irritated with trying to like press their point so they both stand up and are like plan to talk to the young couple who are listening to the song with and then while sharing their earphones um, but then they see each other they look at each other and they, they don't say a word but they retreat back to the, their respective seats and both their dates were sort of like aren't you going to tell them off but then they immediately like flow into a different topic altogether um, and that's where the actual story starts off, where we're brought back to 2015 and we find out what's behind the expression that they gave each other when they saw each other. So again, going back to 2015, um, we get introduced to their characters as university students. They don't know each other. They both have very different lives where... Um, um, Kinu was living with her parents and Mugi was living alone um, and but for some reason there's just something like there's a certain parallelism to how they both um, think um, then eventually you know nothing really exciting happens to Mugi's life other than the fact that one day he saw himself captured in um, in in Google Street View and he was so happy about it that he starts bragging to it about you know to other people and stuff like that and then for um kinu so she, she just finds herself in very like weird and mundane situations that she just wants to opt out of um and then eventually both of them faithfully met one day at a train station where they both missed the last train so they have to wait until morning um to be able to like write it if they want to um, because of that, eventually it starts with this like exciting thing of them finding out that they like one thing 
um, just like the other person, which led to another thing of like discovering that they have a lot of things very, uh, they like a lot of things very similarly. It and the most glaring manifestation of that is when they met they're wearing the same sneakers um they like the same authors they got to talking and talking and they both find out that they were also meant to go to the same museum exhibit it, the other day but they got sidetracked because of so many different things and it was it's definitely sounding like this moment where you know you find someone who's like your soulmate where every single thing that you like they also like and because of that they start hanging out with each other a lot that they eventually start thinking of each other romantically and even the same time that they want to like confess to each other there's a certain mirroring or parallelism going on between the two of them and then they eventually start to date now initially it starts off with this whole like honeymoon phase of a relationship where they're very happy they couldn't keep their hands off each other they just want to spend their time together and everything and um they're very supportive of being with each other um there was there are certain moments where we already sort of like get glimpses of of what's going with the plot when it comes to their shoes so initially with the sneakers thing they're in the same level like they're 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 walking the same pace both literally and um, metaphorically when it comes to life and then there's one moment where um kinu was getting pressured about you know getting a proper job after graduating so she was wearing heels and then when um, mugi sort of like hears that she's crying she's disappointed pointed and frustrated as to how one of her interviews went he runs after her and he, he's just wearing slippers which shows that he's still not feeling that kind of pressure in his life whereas you know kino was there job hunting and everything like that um but eventually tables turn and um and mugi secures a job as a sales executive and we see slowly that everything is starting to change between the two of them um they both still want the same things they still both want to be together but the things that made them happy in the first place or the things that they want to maintain slowly are starting to change some but some of the things that they've gotten used to that was revolving around their relationship whether it be pop culture references like um them listening to smap and then smap disbanding um and um, this bakery that they used to go to is closed already and a couple that they knew who, who had matching tattoos broke up already but they're still there um, but so many things outside of their relationship are changing and so is what's happening within their relationship they decide to like um, they attend the wedding where both of them also talking to like different people share that they want to eventually like finally break up um but they end up spending an amazing night together just doing the things that they used to do and stuff like that um but both of them already know what the other person wants to happen and so they said that you know as a final conversation they want to have it in a restaurant where they used to spend like some of their earliest times together like their first date or so if you will um, and they go back to it and the booth where they used to sit at is occupied so they have to like be seated in another place and what's interesting with that is it also mirrors the fact that they weren't in the same place as they were back when they were sitting in that booth and now they have to be like in a different booth altogether even if it's the, it's still the same restaurant it's still the same place but it's not the same anymore if you get what I mean. It was wrapped up beautifully in that restaurant scene where um, both of them were like talking about, you know, like them breaking up and everything like that. And it's sort of like they're slowly just still coming to terms into what's happening. It's not as blunt as I want to break up or something like that because they both shared like four or five years together. Um, and they're taking that into account as well. Um, and it was really more of like, and they even had a small moment of realization where what if we don't break up? What if we still try to make this work? Like there are still ways to make this work, right? And, and 
it feels like you know they're both wavering with the decision that they were so sure of initially earlier into that day about about breaking up but then they see a young couple enter and sit in their old booth um who reminds them so much of their themselves like the parallelism is so glaringly there um it's it's really one of those moments where would you look at that like the timing is just so uncanny um and the timing you know it it's so obvious that you can only see these types of moments in film right where the the exact same things are happening just when these characters are struggling to like keep their relationship together and you would think that it would remind them of like the good times in their relationship and it might eventually like help them fix whatever it is that they're trying to still fix at that particular moment but that moment was became the breaking point of both of them um and it was so beautifully acted by Suda Masaki and Ari Murakami where they just start crying and it's a type of crying where you look and see in their expressions that they're trying so hard not to but um like just seeing that other couple and and seeing where they used to be at and that's the same place that they used to be at and then now they're this and that's where they started they started to be so aligned with each other and it's still the same thing like they're still aligned with like many things in their lives and their interests and anything like that which what made them like each other in the first place but it's just that they've grown past just similarities or they've just grown past you know feeling like this other person is your soulmate soulmate simply because you like the same things you like the same mundane stuff and they've grown past that and that moment of them just looking at this young couple there wasn't a lot of things said in terms of the two of them um it was really more of the young couple interacting and sharing these lines and just the two of them looking at the young couple but there's just so many things and emotions and like just you can just feel in in that scene it was it was like imagining all those four or five years that they've been together crashing down on them into that very 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 moment that even if they broke up um they still live together three months um in because you know they have to like adjusting or finding a new place separately was kind of hard and everything like that and but it was a clean break between the two of them and it the way that it starts with them you know when they were new in the apartment and they were like cleaning everything up and doing things together and stuff like that um it also ended the same way with them doing the same things together and then they part ways and then we go back to the present where we see both of them again in the same cafe with their respective dates in 2020 um and they were, they 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 didn't talk to each other they didn't um like they know they are aware of each, each other's presence they didn't let their dates know that it was a person that they know from their past what's beautiful is while they're going their separate ways each of them gave each other like a a wave not really while looking at each other it was more of the fact that whether or not the other person turns you acknowledge that their presence was there and i feel like that scene again was so subtle but so beautiful in how they did it um and then eventually they go home they start thinking about each other again as to what did she probably think when this radio show that you used to um used to like listen to um ended or if smap didn't bro- break up around that time would we still be together it was really more of like all these what ifs types of thing but there was never an indication as to whether or not they still want to like see each other again or talk to each other again it was really more of like this looking back at the good memories type of thing and then again just like with any other small details that pour into their story um it ends with a uh, mugi trying to look up the street view of the of the bakery that they used to go to And then he sees that 6 years ago they were captured by street view just them walking together home um holding each other's hands wearing the same shoes just being happy and it was a happy memory that was preserved in that moment and he just smiles at that and then that's where the story ends and i feel like that was such a beautiful circle back to every single thing that um 
interestingly enough, there wasn't a mention of like bouquets in general about the plot, nor were bouquets a huge part of the story. If it was so, um, shoes or the, the symbolism of their shoes actually even played a bigger part um, when it comes to the symbols in this film. But why bouquet? And I feel like very similar to how that ended, they're very similar to the conversation that they've had in the cafe. A bouquet starts out beautiful. You know, you pick it up because there's something special in it. It's a combination of like so many different things and colors that just complement each other for some reason. But then slowly it withers and it doesn't make it any less beautiful. It's just that it slowly withers in like each petal or each flower or anything. It has its own pace and it blows away and eventually turns into nothing but the memory of that bouquet remains and sometimes you put it into like a book or something like that and it becomes like a pressed flower or something like that and it holds a memory and that's what's important like the bouquet isn't there anymore it's not beautiful it's not blooming it's not fresh anymore but the memory that it represented at the time remains and it's very similar to that relationship that they've had and it's an open-ended ending whether or not they still see each other again is up for debate for sure but the message of it is there like it's it's that type of story where four or five years you know it it still doesn't secure the fact that a relationship is going to work or gonna stay forever but instead of remembering just the bad times of it it's more of like going back to these treasured memories and having these healthy what-ifs from time to time and yeah um i think in terms of parallel if in terms of comparing it to gekijo gekijo is more of like this harsh reality of again another level of saying you know what ifs um but that one it wasn't really trying to it was trying to save a to very toxic relationship it was trying to save something that was not healthy in the first place whereas for for this one um for hanetapa it was really more of just um it starts off good and but sometimes you just you you just find yourself not being in the same place with the same person anymore um and you grow from that so these are like two different stories trying to tell the same message but it's delivered um differently but both these films are actually really really good it's just that if you want to um if if you want something that's a little bit more dramatic and a little bit more um painful i guess that's gekijo for you but then if you want something like this that still has a little bit of like a bitter bittersweet taste to it um all throughout then this one um is is something that i would recommend even more but yeah i feel like both films if you like these types of sto stories you would absolutely enjoy it i feel like Ari Murakasami and Sudamasaki's chemistry and at the same time there's a certain realness to them that made this plot work a lot and i don't know i just really really like this film and if you've seen it um or if you're planning to see it or anything like that if you have any thoughts about this film tell me down in the comments below and i would really appreciate chatting with you more about it um if you have any other film recommendations then i would absolutely appreciate them as well if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you're new to my channel and you would want to hear more from me please hit subscribe thank you so much for watching this video and i hope to see you again soon in a new one bye